good. Welcome everybody. My name is John Immel. Today we are discussing the art of skin assessment, which uh, is an exciting topic, something very near and dear to the heart of Ayurveda uh, because skin uh, tells a really important story about your health, about your whole body. And uh, and that's why Ayurveda is so interested in it. And also, I think Ayurveda has a lot to offer in the area of skin care and beauty because it has such a holistic perspective on health. So I'm excited to give this topic tonight. Hope you are too. Again, my name is John Immel. There's a picture of me. And I'm the director of Joyful Belly Ayurveda. Uh, this class is a part of our Fundamentals of Natural Healing Ayurveda Health Counselor course, which is a two-year program to learn the art of Ayurveda, where you become an Ayurveda Health Counselor and uh, are qualified to start seeing clients. Um, and also, uh, we're offering people who are listening on the call tonight a $950 discount uh, a scholarship to the program if you uh, sign up in uh, in the next five days actually um, I have on the screen next week but it's the next five days so um, so great to have you all here and yeah there's a little bit about the course to master the art of clinical Ayurveda to learn the fundamentals of the body from an Ayurvedic perspective and really that's our goal right Ayurveda itself is incredible um, what we want to teach you in the program is health, right? How to help people be healthy. And of course, we use Ayurveda to do that, uh, but it's more than, than that too. So, uh, great. Anyway, uh, why study skin assessment? Well, everybody sees your skin, and naturally you want people to see the best of you. Uh, beautiful skin is attractive. Uh, many clients want brighter skin. But really, the study of skin, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, is not just about vanity. That skin is uh, not just about uh, being beautiful. It's also uh, about uh, what's on the inside. And the skin uh, gives us a lot of information about what's on the inside. And that's why it's uh, really important to us. Let me just make sure I'm on the rec I have this recorded here. Uh, let me see if I can, as we go. Uh, all right, thank you. So yeah, a, the skin is a barometer of your health. It's a mirror and uh, it can tell you, of course, we're used to seeing a lot of information about skin, uh, uh, about a person just from looking at their skin uh, we can tell their age. I mean, pe people do this already, even before you study Ayurveda, that you can uh, see a person's age by looking at their skin. We can tell a little bit about their health, their stress, and their sleep. Those are some things that you can see even without training. Uh, and why? Why is it that skin is such a reflection of the rest of your body? Well, because skin is one of your membranes. Uh, it's, in fact, one way to look at the whole body is, a, is as a series of membranes wrapped around each other. All of your organs, all of your tissues, all of your muscles um, are membranes wrapped around membranes. The, you may have heard the word fascia and, uh, and other terms for different membranes in your body. Well, these membranes are fed by our blood, and so poor quality skin uh, comes from poor quality blood. And really, it's an indicator that all of the membranes throughout the whole body are, uh, may, may have poor quality. And so uh, skin is really vital information about your membranes. It's vital information about you. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about some basic anatomy of the skin, uh, some causes of skin pathologies, and then we'll go through uh, skin assessment, and then a summary of skin by dosha. And dosha, if you're unfamiliar with that uh, term, is your Ayurvedic body type. It uh, characterizes your, uh, your nature on a physical level and perhaps on a psychological level as well. All right, what about normal skin? 
normal skin, and you can see uh, this picture on the right-hand side, is slightly unctuous and oily. By, by unctuous, I mean it has a bit of a sheen to it, a, a slight oiliness to it. Uh, the skin should be supple, not dry or rough. Uh, but the skin shouldn't be clammy either. It, uh, it should have a medium thickness with few wrinkles. It should be smooth without blemishes or rashes. And it should be bright. And by bright or glowing skin, I don't mean that the skin emits light, right? We're not uh, phosphorescent. But, uh, but we all know what the idea of a person who has glowing skin looks like. And I think this person on the right here really characterizes that um, in, this, in this photo. A little bit of rosiness in the cheeks is a sign of good, healthy blood. So when we look at a person, if we see those things, we're going to be thinking immediately, oh, they're reasonably healthy. They're a pretty, good, pretty healthy person. Something about them is strong. They may, even, they may have a, a sickness, but constitutionally, they're, uh, they're healthy. Constitutionally, they're strong. Here's a basic picture of your skin anatomy, which I think is helpful. And I actually, I think the next photo is really helpful too, but it just go, it shows some of, the, um, some of the components of the skin. Notice the uh, blood flow through the skin here. Notice this sweat gland. That's gonna be a big part of the oiliness on your skin. Notice this yellow material, which is fat on, uh, underneath the skin, and you have these hair follicles here. All this is gonna play a role in, uh, in our health of our skin. Uh, look at this muscle here on your hair follicle, right? If you've ever gotten goosebumps, that's the muscle there that's, that's pulling. Here's another picture of the skin, and I like this picture a lot because it gives you a really good picture of what's happening on the surface of your skin, that you have these living uh, skin cells um, at the lower levels here, and these skin cells keep on dividing and multiplying and then up here, you notice that they're dead. They don't have a nucleus anymore. And then these are the old dried cells, and then they flake off, right? We're losing some of our skin cells all the time. And, uh, and these, uh, this, so this layer of skin at the top of our skin is really a dead layer of skin, uh, which I find, very, I find that very interesting, that the layer of, uh, that we're seeing when we look at someone is dead skin. And that's protective, right? The outside of our body is not uh, the living, uh, fresh things, but it's the, um, the uh, skin that, is, um, that, has, uh, that has died, and it's protecting the uh, living cells underneath. And I'm just flipping back and forth between presentation mode because I can't see the chat box while I'm in presentation mode, and I want to uh, make sure I'm not missing some burning question that, uh, that you have. All right, so Ayurveda's perspective on the skin. And I really love this metaphor, and I wish you could capture it in a really good picture, but this is the best, uh, best we've got right now. Um, the Ayurvedic anatomy or the Ayurvedic model of skin is that it's uh, comparable to the skin that forms on the top of milk when you boil it. You know, if you've ever boiled milk and then you turn the stove off, just within a, a, a few seconds, you see this skin layer that forms on the top. That's the, uh, the visual that you want to have with you throughout this whole uh, talk today. Because in Ayurveda, the skin on our body is the cream that rises to the surface of the blood. It's, it's almost as if, um, as if you had your blood and it formed a skin on top of it. Uh, that is uh, Ayurveda's m a model or metaphor for your, for, for your skin, and it just shows the close relationship between skin health and the health of your blood. So essentially in Ayurveda, the top layer of your skin is a byproduct of your blood plasma, uh, the, clear, the clear part of the blood. Uh, there's Ayurveda separates the blood into two components, the red part, which is your red blood cells, and the clear part. And you see in Western medicine, they do that sometimes too. Uh, and so, yeah, your quality of your skin is only as good as your, as your blood chemistry. And if you have healthy blood, then you're going to have glowing skin. And if you have uh, toxic blood or poor quality blood, then you're, you're going to see skin disorders. And I, this is such a great picture, I think, uh, because... It shows that nice little rosiness of the cheeks that 
And, and that coincides with the brightness in her eyes. You see the brightness in her eyes there, that sparkle or glint in the eye. Um, that's not coincidental that she has the rosy cheeks and that sparkle. It's good quality uh, red part of your blood or rukta in Ayurveda that gives the nice sheen to the lips, the rosiness to the cheeks, and the sparkle in the eye. Those all come uh, together as one. So a nice picture of glowing skin there. And of course, you see some, there's, there's some freckles and things in the photo that could be genetic or it could be pointing to an imbalance. We'd have to know more about the client. Notice the sheen on the skin as well. So all good signs of, uh, of healthy skin. So what are some of the things that we assess with the skin? We're gonna assess thickness, moisture, and color, because that's gonna tell us about uh, the constitution of the client, and it's also gonna tell us about imbalances. And it, uh, the skin is affected by all of your major organs. So if you have an imbalance in any one of your major organs, it's gonna have a big imbalance. Uh, it's gonna show up on your skin especially, as you'll find out, heart, liver, kidney, and digestion. Uh, they have a dramatic effect on your skin, uh, but all of the organs do. If you have an imbalance in any one of your major organs, you should, uh, uh, the astute practitioner is going to uh, be able to see that, right? Your, your organs, and this is not some mystical uh, scale or anything, right? All of your organs do something really important. So if some, one of them is not working so well, it should be obvious, right? It should be obvious to the practitioner who studies this sort of thing. And, uh, and I always find that fascinating. I love to, um, to uh, study Ayurveda for, so that I can see people, to understand them, to see what's going on, to have compassion for them. And uh, I, I find that very enjoyable, very edifying. Uh, problems on skin point to imbalances beneath the surface. And so the Ayurvedic treatment of skin is always going to address these root, balances, root imbalances. In the uh, skincare industry, you see a lot of people putting topical uh, products to treat their skin, uh, a cream or some kind of ointment or uh, poultice to treat various skin uh, disorders. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But in Ayurveda, we're all, we're, our our main focus is always going to be internal. We're always going to be looking at what's happening uh, to the heart, uh, liver, kidney digestion, and lungs and spleen, and, and all the other uh, organs as well. Uh, Sandra uh, Loverty asks in the chat box here, would you say that damaged skin can be completely healed at any age? And Sandra, the answer to that is always, uh, is always yes. Um, that doesn't mean that we know how. That doesn't mean that um, that we have a that Ayurveda has a ready answer for that, or that even statistically it might be rare. But uh, we all know that as long as we stay on the journey, that as long as we're trying, uh, we're gonna discover all kinds of things that are are gonna help us. And so I never we never give up, right? We um, and uh, and of course in Ayurveda we always leave lots of room for spiritual healing as well. Um, uh, you know, I've had uh, so many points in my own healing journey where I have come to some new spiritual realization uh, that, um, that relieved so much stress or so much of a, of a burden that I was carrying that my health just spontaneously improved after that. And, uh, and again, that's not some mystical thing that is, uh, you know, if you're if you have less stress, you're you're gonna you're gonna be looking and feeling better. And so Ayurveda leaves lots of room for uh, different approaches towards uh, towards health and uh, and how we get there. And one thing that uh, that we always say is yes to a question like uh, like Sandra's. Uh, we're al we always keep trying, and uh, and we never yeah, give up. It's fun to uh, to study our health. All right. Um, just as an aside, uh, Shushruta, one of the uh, authors of the classical text in Ayurveda, break the skin down into seven layers. And each of those layers has a specific role. It's prone to certain disorders. Um, it's a little bit more of an advanced topic that we teach students in our school, um, but I'm not going to go into it too much tonight. But I want to I at least let everyone know that Ayurveda breaks the skin down into uh, seven layers. All right, let's go over some things that cause skin problems.
All right. We've already talked about how the skin has such a close relationship with blood plasma. And on the left hand side of this photo here, we see puffy skin that looks a little waterlogged. On the right hand side, we see uh, skin that is not waterlogged, uh, where the skin is a little bit, uh, even a little bit thin. On the right hand side, revealing the blood vessels beneath. And so water retention is uh, one of the causative factors in uh, that we're going to look at with uh, with skin assessment. And here we see just the opposite. Here's an example of dehydrated skin. Now, when I look at this uh, photo right away, I see that uh, that this client should have nice, full, uh, rich, um, supple skin. Just constitutionally, I notice that her skin doesn't look dry, right? It doesn't look um, flaky or rough on the surface. It looks dehydrated. There's an there's an oily sheen. Um, so there's you couldn't say it's dry skin, but you but you have to conclude it's dehydrated skin. You know this uh, could be a person who has spent the day uh, out in the sun at the beach or or in the hot desert sun, and their skin needs to be rehydrated. And you can see the signs of uh, of this um, dehydration in the skin uh, would be uh, that the the uh, the wrinkles on the skin. Now her skin isn't particularly thin, but if we also saw that the skin was thin and um, and that the there was an oil on the surface of the skin, we would include we would conclude that it's also dry skin. Right, so there's dehydrated skin and dry skin. We want to keep uh, those concepts separate in our mind as we're uh, thinking about skin. And here's an example of uh, poor quality of blood plasma. That there's toxins in the blood. It, you know, as as a person ages, it's harder and harder to eliminate those toxins. But you see here that the skin has lost its its sheen or its shine and uh, it's lacking in luster, and, uh, and so there is some toxins in the blood. Here's an example of the red part of the blood being hot and fiery. That, um, oh, I hear some uh, background noise there. Let me uh, mute those lines again. Let me see if I can mute them. I was having trouble getting the interface up before. Okay, we got that taken care of. And I see there's a question here. Um, excess use of alcohol and tobacco can cause the type of de dehydration we saw in the previous photo also. Yes, thank you, Teresa, uh, for that contribution. So if, the, uh, if rupta, the red part of the blood, is, uh, has a lot of heat in it, has a lot of pitta in it, you'll see prominent blood vessels, skin inflammation, flushed skin on the face. And, um, and if the blood is very cold, you'll see this pale sign. Look at this skin here, looks more anemic, very pale. Uh, there could be even blood loss. And this is also a sign of cold skin. Although um, uh, cold skin that's due to stagnancy can also look a little, a little bit bluish as well. I mentioned before the liver, the liver is a major detox organ. And if your liver is unable to properly detoxify the blood, then you're going to get toxins building up in the blood. And then your body's going to try to release them through the skin. And that's going to leave all kinds of uh, skin problems in its wake. The skin will lose its luster and you may even get rashes. In fact, most uh, uh, rashes in Ayurveda are seen as uh, liver disorders. Here's another example of um, problems or hot and fiery rupta datu, the red part of the blood. Here you see acne and, uh, and there's a number of infected uh, pores here making these white heads. 
And, uh, and that would also, this kind of thing would be a, in Ayurveda, we would automatically assume that the body's releasing toxins uh, through the skin. I mean, there could, the person could be allergic to something and then, uh, and then the toxins that are a byproduct of that allergy are coming out the skin. This doesn't have to be exposure to uh, chemicals from a nearby factory or something like that. The toxins could be produced as, the, as a byproduct of natural inflammation in the body. Uh, nevertheless, there's something creating toxins in the body and, or causing us buildup. And, uh, and this is what an Ayurveda practitioner would assume is the underlying root of some situation like this. And there are various um, conditions that could affect the liver that display on the skin. Like jaundice can make the skin yellow. Or hepatitis C could, be, uh, could correlate with itchy skin and rashes. If a person has an underactive liver, they'll have a darker skin than is normal for their ethnicity. I had a client once uh, who had very dark skin. And I asked uh, about you know, their, the rest of their family, like did anyone else in their family have uh, dark skin? And, and she said, oh, everyone else in their family is, uh, was very uh, light skinned, but her skin was much darker than the rest of her family. And just with the particular kind of, of coloring in the skin, um, it's uh, a, kind of br a certain kind of brownish coloring in the skin. Uh, you can see that that um, correlates with uh, vata in the liver. So if a person has unusually darker skin relative to their ethnicity, uh, then you, uh, you, may ask, you may suspect some vata in the liver. All right, here's another example of a skin condition that we would consider associated with the liver, these liver spots here um, underneath the eye uh, or anywhere really on the body. All right, in order for skin to be bright and for it to glow, the skin needs to be highly vascular. Uh, the skin needs to, be, uh, needs to have access to good, strong, healthy circulation. Your skin is highly vascularized. There's lots of blood vessels that go through your skin. Just think of how much blood is in a person's skin in the, uh, on a hot day in June when their face looks flushed and red. All that blood is coming close to the surface of the skin all those capillary beds are dilated. And, um, and so uh, the skin has a capacity to hold lots of blood. And the opposite is also true in the winter. Right now, uh, it's winter, and in the Northern Hemisphere anyway. Uh, and the uh, people's skin looks a little paler than normal because there's less blood flow to the surface of the skin in the winter because your body's trying to uh, keep its heat in doesn't want your blood to go close to the surface of the skin. So this time of year, your skin has much uh, poorer circulation, and that's why uh, skin doesn't, looks a little older this time of year. It's always so wonderful in April when the uh, temperature finally gets hot enough for blood flow to start, flow, for the blood to start flowing in the skin again, and then you see everybody looks 10 years younger, and everyone's happy, and they're glowing, and that's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. So good circulation refreshes the skin and uh, brings it a, a glow and a vitality. It brings prana uh, to the skin and uh, it nourishes the skin and it also flushes the skin of wastes. This is why the heart plays such an important role uh, with the skin. And um, I've seen this happen uh, several times in my life where a person needed a heart operation because their arteries were uh, clogged and their heart wasn't functioning well, their, so their circulation was uh, was poor, and their skin um, looked very unhealthy. And then they had the heart operation, and right away their skin uh, looked much better, and they had lots more energy as well. So your heart uh, and the strength of your heart can affect uh, your skin via the circulatory system. Digestion. Also, a big, plays a big factor in the health of your skin. And I think that concept is becoming more and more popular, uh, which is great uh, to see that, that people are starting to get to know, starting to know that, that uh, in order to 
There are several reasons why digestion plays such a big role with skin. First of all, uh, in order to have healthy skin, you have to have well-nourished skin. Well, where does your nourishment come from? It comes from your digestive tract. I mean, it comes from the food you eat, but your digestive tract has to get the nourishment out of the food and into your body. So uh, we need to have good diet and good digestion to simply nourish our blood plasma and then nourish the skin. Well, um, so that's what happens with good digestion. With weak digestion, not only do you um, uh, lack the nourishment from the food that you're eating, but there's also a lot of gas, bloating, and fermentation that happens when you're not digesting your food well, and that causes a buildup of metabolic wastes, uh, which, uh, for, which get into your blood and then make your skin look very unhealthy. So it's like this double whammy when, you're, uh, when your digestion is weak because you lose the nourishment from the food and then you on top of it have a buildup of toxins. So uh, we want to undo that spiral and, uh, and get us back in the positive direction. And, uh, and Ayurveda would say that digestion is perhaps the most important factor to uh, good skin health. Great, let me pause for a second just to see if what's happening in the uh, chat box here. All right, the cosmetic industry does not favor oils in the skin of the face. I disagree. Should we go with the same oils for each dosha in the skin of the face? Okay, so um, yeah, there are different oils for each body type in Ayurveda. Uh, Vata massage oil, uh, Pitta massage oil, and Kapha massage oil. You can check that out on the Joyful Belly site. Uh, the different oils there. And yeah, you definitely want to use um, oils or uh, ointments with um, herbs that are compatible with your dosha on the face. Because it's not just a one size fits all, uh, folks. If you have very oily skin, that's going to require a really different uh, kind of solution than a person who has really dry skin, etc. Um, Heather, uh, she asks, how long does it take for an offending action to show on the skin? Well, um, not very long at all. I mean, as soon as it's in your blood, it can show up on your skin. I mean, I noticed just in my own skin that if I eat something and it makes me not feel so good, it can be a matter of hours or even within an hour that I notice uh, my skin looks a little off. If a person uh, gets shocked, for example, uh, Heather, like just by s something happening, almost getting in a car crash or something, they could go, why is a ghost, right? You hear these expressions where a person suddenly turns pale, um, etc. So your skin can get affected very quickly by your circulation or by toxins. Uh, Deborah says acne problems usually means a toxic colon. Well, um, yes, if uh, that would be the first, that would be my uh, sort of first guess uh, is or the first place I would look, uh, but it could be a number of sources. As I said before, a person could have eaten a food they're allergic to and break out in acne. And uh, then even if the food isn't in the colon yet, it could be still in the small intestine. So we don't want to rule out these other things, but yeah, we're going to look to the colon first, and then we're going to uh, continue to play detective, which is what Ayurveda practitioners do for a living is they're, uh, they, they're good health detectives, and uh, we're going to pursue um, every possible avenue, just like a good detective. Great, thanks for your comments, everyone. All right, yeah, so to summarize the effect of digestion on the skin is that your diet goes into your digestive tract, and then your digestive tract absorbs the the good or not so good food that you've eaten um, or uh, according to the strength of your digestion. And then that uh, material that you've eaten gets um, put into the blood plasma. And then finally it affects your skin. And so there's a little chain, of re uh, chain reaction there. So we should always uh, be thinking about the amount of fat in the skin. That uh, ample subcutaneous fat in the skin makes the skin full and plump looking. 
There will, uh, there's less wrinkling, no sagging. There's a smooth, soft um, uh, sheen to the skin that has enough fat in it. And if the fats in your skin are depleted, your skin will look more thin and dry. And of course, the uh, beauty industry uh, will also talk to you a lot about collagen, your collagen fibers, making the skin elastic, etc. Um, other causes of skin uh, issues could be bacteria and viruses. Warts, for example, are caused by a virus. And uh, there are lots of other conditions like uh, vitiligo uh, that can have their origins in uh, either bacteria or virus, tinea, et cetera. Sun exposure can also cause uh, blemishing in the skin. And here we see a person with lots of freckles and it could, these freckle, this freckling could have uh, been genetic, but also the amount of freckles increases with exposure to UV rays. Aging, the skin loses elasticity and collagen, and that will cause uh, some wrinkling. Here's an example of poison ivy, uh, exposure to an allergen. And uh, the person could have exposure to a topical allergen, or it could be an internal uh, exposure. If a person eats gluten and they're, gluten in, uh, and they're uh, celiac, they have celiac disease, they'll have an allergic reaction to the wheat and that will cause them to break out in hives. Here, in the case of poison ivy, this is topical dermatitis where contact with the allergen has caused eruptions, uh, these sort of fluid filled um, uh, blistering on the skin. Your genetic makeup can predispose you to uh, some skin issues as well. All right, let's look at skin color and what that indicates. I'll do a quick check. Uh, cysts. So cystic acne can uh, is also a sign of uh, toxins. Uh, Karen notes that holding on to trauma and stress can affect the skin. Absolutely, because stress affects your liver. Uh, and it, weak, and it re, uh, reduces your liver's ability to process toxins. So if you have a weak liver and then you have some stress, you're, it's going to affect your skin. All right, normal skin tones. What is a, norm, what is a normal color for skin? Well, that really varies very widely by ethnicity. Uh, the uh, lightness or darkness of your skin is due to the pigment melanin. And people with both light and dark complexions have melanin. Uh, but here, and this is very interesting, there are two types of melanin, which is the eumelanin, giving the black and brown hues, and the pheomelanin, giving the red and yellow hues. Oh, and good, I do have, uh, have a picture of that. So, um, so here on the left is the eumelanin, more of the uh, brown tones that also give brown or black hair. And look at the dark brown eyes too. And then on the right side, we see the pheomelanin type, which tends towards blonde or red hair. Um, and uh, green eyes, or in this case, it looks like blue eyes. So we should be thinking uh, about those types uh, when we're assessing the skin. Uh, pink skin is uh, is normal. It can be it can be a sign of strong, healthy circulation at the surface of the skin, as I mentioned, with nice rosy cheeks from before. Or pink skin can be a sign of sun damage, inflammation, or irritation. And uh, on some of these slides, you'll see I'll put a, a little remedy there, aloe vera gel or neem oil topically to cool and soothe the irritation. I won't always mention the remedy there, but it'll be up on the slide if you want to keep your eyes peeled for, um, for that information. And allergies can also uh, cause the skin to be uh, look pink. And this is here, it looks like... Uh, Sunburn, sunburn skin. I feel bad for this person. I, I've been there, I've been there. A person's face will be pink if they're embarrassed or anxious and, um, and they'll blush. 
And that blushing comes from the blood vessels dilating. And if you're a person who tends to blush really easily, then you want to avoid uh, foods that are vasodilators, like alcohol, black pepper, or garlic. A person could have a red or flushed face if they have an internal heat condition, a pitta condition. Uh, pitta is the body type associated with heat. And so if there are uh, toxins, inflammation, infection, or fermentation, the GI tract, and if it causes pitta to get aggravated, you'll see uh, this kind of redness or flushing. And that's why we're in Ayurveda going to focus on cleansing the liver or, uh, or the blood uh, with a, a cooling bitter herb, for example, like neem is one we've mentioned, but aloe vera uh, or uh, uh, even an herb like amalaki or uh, bumi amalaki. And these are both uh, liver herbs. Kaduchi is another one. So I've gone over a few different causes of pink or, or red or flushed skin. And there's another cause, which is, which is uh, not due to underlying heat that's worth mentioning. And it's uh, red or flushed skin due to blood stagnation. Kapha people, uh, which uh, is a condition, is a, uh, the constitution or body type that tends to get more congested, like stagnant blood, uh, poor circulation, very thick, hard to circulate blood. Uh, the, if the blood is hard to circulate, you're going to have poor lymphatic drainage. And if the lymph system can't drain itself, then all your blood, all your skin cells are producing uh, normal metabolic waste products uh, through just their it's everyday activities, right? Every cell of your body produces waste, waste products. And your lymphatic system is supposed to flush those waste products uh, away, and then they're supposed to get eliminated by the kidney out of your body. Well, um, if your uh, circulation is stagnant and your, uh, and the, your lymphatic system will be stagnant, those toxins won't drain and they'll be stuck in your skin layer. And then what will happen is they'll start to irritate your skin and then your skin will look red and puffy. So if you see a person has red and puffy skin, they might have thick, hard to circulate blood or uh, lymphatic congestion, and, uh, and they might need that flushing. And that's why you see here that we put uh, the remedies for this would be something that's gonna move the blood a little bit, like turmeric will invigorate the blood and dilate some of those blood vessels, or even diuretics like Punarnava or CCFT. Let's talk about pale color skin. And the funny thing is, is that each dosha has a pale skin type. So there's a there's a, a vata type pale skin, a pitta type pale skin, and a kapha type pale skin. Pitta fair skin is the one we're discussing first. Here's an example on the right of a pitta person. How do I know this person's pitta? Even by just the sharpness of the eyes, the direct gaze, the stance, look at how confident and, um, and you know, there's a kind of, uh, uh, a bold, uh, f sharp focus here. And I see the little bit of uh, uh, ruby, -ness on, uh, ruby redness on the, on the cheeks. It could be makeup. She's obviously wearing lipstick. Uh, so she could have a little blush on the cheeks too. Hard to tell. But this is a fair skinned Pitta individual. And this uh, skin type is really prone to freckling and sunburn. Uh, and you, but, but usually, the uh, strong circulation gives pitta skin a healthy, rosy glow. But there is a uh, kind of pitta type that has this pale uh, skin. Now, vata type pale skin is going to come from blood deficiency, anemia, um, or even cold due to deficiency. A lot of vata people, they're uh, so deficient that their body has trouble keeping itself warm, and then they get uh, cold. Here you see this person has anemia. Look at the paleness of the lips here uh, is a really clear sign of, um, of anemia and, of course, the whole paleness of the face. Notice that her complexion is also a little bit sallow. There is um, 
there is some toxic buildup uh, also. Even though she has nice youthful looking skin. So when the skin is cold, then that, just like um, a, uh, just like it is in the winter in the northern hemisphere, when your skin's cold, it causes poor circulation in the skin, and that makes the skin lusterless. Winter skin. Now, kapha people can have pale skin too, and their pale skin is really a very different cause. Their pale skin is caused by uh, more congested blood. Remember I said before that kapha can, tends to have more congested conditions. What happens for kapha individuals is that their metabolism is a little bit lower. Maybe their thyroid's a little bit lower. And so uh, when the metabolism is low, remember your, your metabolism is really your metabolic fire. If your metabolism is low, your fire is low, and that makes your body a little bit more cool. Uh, my wife's uh, temperature is like that. She has a natural kapha, and whenever she takes her temperature, it's like 96.5 degrees or 97 degrees. She has a very low temperature. Uh, and so when your temperature is a little bit low, then the skin becomes cool, and that causes the blood vessels in the skin to constrict, and, uh, and there's a lack of blood flow in the skin. So... Kapha people tend to have a pale skin due to this lack of blood flow in the surface of the skin. And you can tell her skin is kapha just by the thickness of it, right? This is not a thin skin, but a nice, thick, uh, supple uh, skin with uh, healthy subcutaneous fat. All right, and here's that picture of again, again of the uh, gray skin, which is indi indicative or lusterless, um, a skin that uh, has uh, uh, ama or toxins associated with it. Let me just take a look at our chat box here to see what uh, kinds of questions that I've gotten here. Oh, it looks like I've gotten a lot. Um, any thoughts on small bumps over the skin? I on the arms and legs. I have to have more. No more info. Are they red or not? Uh, maybe I would even. I might even need to see a picture. Um, what causes melasma and what's the best way to treat it? Uh, let's take a look here. And since that is a, oh, let me see here if I can get this up. Melasma is always, uh, here's a picture of melasma, this, uh, brown to gray brown patches. Here, so um, that we would associate generally in Ayurveda with liver, and to me uh, also looks vata in nature uh, of the just the irregularity. So um, I would have to know a little bit more about this particular skin condition to give um, uh, more info. But off the top of my head, I'm going to say uh, vata in uh, in the liver. The cause of dermatitis. Dermatitis just means inflamed skin. There literally can be um, hun, hun, you know, hundreds of different causes of dermatitis, everything from allergens, uh, et cetera. Uh, and then you said, my friend got antibiotics. Shall I advise her not to take them? Well, I'm going to guess that a medical doctor told her to take them. And unless you have the legal authority to, uh, to give that advice, I would not give that advice. Um, you can talk about with your friend uh, some uh, research papers or um, some uh, other people's advice on some of the possible side effects of antibiotics, but I wouldn't uh, advise her to go against her doctor's uh, uh, advice on that. What form of turmeric do you suggest for blood movement? Well, I would, I think uh, the raw turmeric root or, uh, or powdered turmeric from uh, a good source is, uh, is a great, great way to go. Uh, I'm going to go back to the lecture just a little bit. I do see some other questions, and that's great. And I'll periodically jump back and forth to, um, uh, to answer some more questions. All right. Here's, well, here's a dramatic example of uh, bluish skin tint. Now, I have 
I've never seen this clinically uh, this to this level before, but I have seen many, many clients that have a slight bluish tint to, uh, to different various parts of their skin. It could be that their uh, lips look a little purple. Uh, kids who go swimming in the swimming pool all day uh, uh, have that often. And, um, or a little bluish tint underneath the eyes or even in the fingertips or underneath the nail beds. And anytime you see that bluish tint, you know that blood is stagnant. Remember uh, in grade school, you learned that arterial blood coming in your arteries is very red and then the blood that goes to your veins is more bluish or purple. So basically what it means is that if you see bluish tint uh, that the blood has been sitting so long it's starting to look like venous blood and, uh, and that means that the uh, blood is deoxygenated and that's a medical condition known as cyanosis. It's a sign of cold quality in Ayurveda and also blood stagnation. There is a uh, orangish uh, colored skin and that can happen from eating too many carrots. In fact, the, uh, my uh, first consultation as an Ayurvedic counselor um, was my easiest consultation ever. My client was complaining his skin was orange and I asked him if he, uh, what he eats and he says, oh, I eat tons of carrots every day. And, uh, and so I advised him to not eat so many carrots. And uh, still, I think that was my easiest uh, consultation ever. I know I had some slides here on yellow skin, but I don't know where they went. Um, I mean, uh, something that must have happened to them. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to mention that yellowing of the skin. And uh, my uh, wife just delivered our baby boy about a month ago and he still has a bit of a yellowish tint to his skin. And it's very common in babies to have a mild jaundice. It reflects uh, that the uh, liver is, you know, still not, um, you know, uh, still not performing well in my, uh, my son's body. And hopefully that'll clear up in the next few weeks. It usually it does. Uh, but at, um, at various stages in a person's life, if, if they get hepatitis or if they have cirrhosis of the liver uh, or, or for any reason, um, uh, I have a genetic uh, blood condition called thalassemia minor, which causes a lot of uh, pr production of this yellow bile-based pigment uh, that can turn my skin yellow if I'm not careful, uh, a little bit yellowish. And so if you see that yellowish tint, and it can be very subtle, folks. Uh, compare, you know, ask your clients to uh, hold up the palms of their hands and compare your skin to theirs and the amount of yellow in it, and that will help you determine uh, how much of these bile pigments are getting into the blood, which is a sign of weak liver. Now, those bile pigments are a little bit irritating to the whole body, so people who have that yellowing um, can be a little bit irritable, and uh, and that that. You know, so that's a sign you want to look out for. Some people have an olive skin, and that's usually genetic. Uh, I have an Italian-American uh, family background, and I have that olive uh, tone to my skin. Here's a sallow skin color here. And sallow skin has a slightly sort of yellowish, brownish, or greenish uh, tint to it. Now, this photo on the left, uh, part of the skin tone here is ethnic. Uh, but there's also a bit of sallowness uh, to the skin as well. Really beneath the eyes here is where I'm showing, uh, where I'm seeing in this photo. And on the right, uh, this uh, other photo here, you see just a bit of green tones, especially in this, in these shadows and really around the eyes here, you see a little bit of greenish tone. And it just makes you want to say, okay, you need to go outside and get some sunlight, right? <laughs> uh, if you spend too much time looking at a computer screen, or I remember as a kid watching in cartoons, when the cartoon character smokes too many cigars, their uh, face turns green. And so that sallow color, I generally think of as pitta toxins in the liver. And you, uh, if you have that, you wanna cleanse your liver and also tonify it. Guducci is such a great liver tonic. A great skin herb in general, I think, of Guducci, just because of its effects on the liver. 
then you have other herbs like bring garage we should uh uh, we'll give a little shout out to Bring Garage here. I hope hopefully somewhere we'll get a spelling of that herb um, in the slide so that everyone can write that down. And then there's your um, more sweet liver tonics like licorice root. Go out, uh, go outside, get some sunshine. Will help with that sallow complexion. And avoid uh, exposure to toxins from cigars, alcohol, paint fumes, things like that. Will make you if it. If it makes you turn nauseous, it'll probably make you turn green if you have enough exposure to it. Oh, look, there's the yellow skin tone. So that orange one must have gotten uh, moved. Now, this is very dramatic. I mean, this is emergency room yellow here. If you see a client that has this much yellowing in their skin, send them immediately to the emergency room. Uh, their liver is uh, maybe cirrhotic and... Uh, and this is very this is very dangerous. It's usually not this pronounced. In fact, I've I've never seen a person this yellow uh, myself. All right, temperature of the skin. Well, you can simply ask the client if they feel hot or cold, but this is uh, ends up being problematic when you're assessing skin temperature because clients may feel cold because their skin is hot. We'll talk about that. Uh, uh, that's because, yeah, we'll talk about that in just a second. So you want to ask the client uh, how they feel, if they feel hot or cold, but you also want to touch their skin, if you have a license to touch their skin, with the back of your hand, either to the client's forehead or cheek um, or to their hand. And Pitta people generally have hotter skin than Vata or Kapha types and their skin will feel warm or hot to the touch. Uh, but Vata and Kapha people tend to have cool, um, uh, cool skin, but a Kapha person doesn't feel cold. So Kapha will have cool skin, but feel really hot on the inside. So those, those Kapha types can, can sometimes wanna kick off the blankets. Um, not all Kapha, some Kaphas are cold through and through, but Vata people will generally be cold and they'll wanna cuddle up to those Pitta folks that are hot. Um, yeah, so pitta people can have hot skin due to uh, strong circulation, due to high metabolism, or it could also be pathological, a sign of internal heat. And if the client's skin is hot to the touch, but the client says they feel cold, that's really typical. And it means that, um, that the person has a heat condition and their hot blood is flowing close to the surface of their skin, and their body's losing a lot of heat. And, and because their body's losing heat, they feel cold, even though when you touch them, their skin is warm. So um, I, I, I had, uh, in the past, a tinea infection after traveling to South Asia uh, in, the, in the summer months. It was just really hot. And um, and, and that was when I was in my early stages of healing, uh, from, with Ayurveda and I was freezing all the time, but everyone who ever like, um, you know, uh, touched my hand or arm or something would say that I was like a hot, I was very hot. And so I felt cold, but I was hot and it was, it was pretty amazing. After I uh, got rid of uh, that tinea infection, I was much warmer all the time. And so don't rule out a pathogen if you feel cold all the time. And uh, I also had, some, had uh, a parasitic infection from traveling overseas. This is how I got into Ayurveda, by the way. Is I, I, was, I spent too much time um, having uh, adventures uh, overseas in uh, different countries and acquired a few critters along the way. And when I got rid of a blastocystis infection, uh, then I was no longer sensitive to the cold at all. And these days, even on cold winter days, I'm, I'm fine uh, out, going outside and even without a jacket for a while, which is how I remember being as a kid. So uh, let's see here. Uh, cold skin, I said before, is vata or kapha in nature? Could be from a... Uh, 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 a low hypo, uh, it could be from a low thyroid or hypothyroid condition, inadequate blood flow to the skin, um, and vata tends to be cold from weak, deficient blood. We talked about that uh, earlier. Here's dry skin. 
it appears flaky, scaly, or cracking, and it can be fragile and also prone to wrinkling. And here you see the skin is a little bit cracked. It's a close-up, and it looks a little patchy or cracked. And some good remedies for a dry skin would be to make sure that you're eating enough fats and oils, some good quality fats and oils like ghee, or, um, or even a daily uh, sesame oil massage. Ayurveda loves massaging the entire body with oils. Make sure you're adequately hydrated as well. Uh, Vata people especially need to keep uh, their electrol need to replenish their electrolytes so that they retain the water they drink. And you can always squeeze a little bit of lime into the water. Now lime is a vasodilator which will improve uh, peripheral circulation to the skin and uh, make your skin uh, look a little bit brighter, um, a little more sparkly, a little more glowing because you'll have that uh, better circulation. But of course. Be careful with that in the winter because if you bring the blood close to the surface of your skin, you're gonna feel cold and you could catch a chill and even get sick. So uh, just use that with, you know, dress warmly if you're gonna be using that uh, Lyme technique to improve circulation to your skin. Uh, some people have clammy skin, that skin that is wet, damp, and sticky, and it usually feels uh, uh, cold to the touch. And it can be from fluid accumulation in the extremities as a result of poor circulation. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, it's either poor circulation. The poor circulation could be due to a heart problem or it could also be due to thick blood. And the remedy there uh, would be diuretics to reduce the uh, water congestion and to fix the underlying cause of the poor circulation. And then there's oily skin, right? We talked about dry, we talked about uh, wet, and now we're talking about oily. Uh, just all different types here. And uh, oily skin can be from a pitta condition. It can be from uh, too much fats or rich foods or meat. Skin thickness. Uh, we have a saying in English that a person has a thick skin, and that means a person is not easily upset or offended. They have a good barrier. They can be even a little stubborn. And so in Ayurveda, it's the oily quality that makes a person hardy, resilient, and have a thick skin. So a person who uh, has a uh, thick skin psychologically may actually have a thick skin physically too. And uh, my dad's like this. I. Uh, you know, I, I feel bad for all my family members because they get dragged into my uh, Ayurveda lectures. But my dad has a thick skin. He's not easily upset. Um, he can handle um, a difficult situation without his feathers getting ruffled. Um, and he can be a little bit more, uh, he can hold his ground. And I've benefited from that a lot in my life. And, um, and it's great. Uh, so, you know, and he actually does have a thicker skin, like physically thicker skin. So he has it emotionally and physically. They go hand in hand. It's the oily quality. Uh, so the overall thickness of the skin varies according to the thickness of the epidermis layer or the amount of fat in the lower layers of the skin or even the amount of fluids in the skin, right? A puffy skin is a thicker skin, and that could be due to uh, water buildup. And there are various effect factors that affect the thickness of the skin, age, gender, skin type, and your diet and lifestyle habits. So thick skin is lots of subcutaneous fat and, uh, and that will nourish the skin and give a good complexion. We always say that kapha has a good complexion because they have plenty of subcutaneous fat in the skin. And this person must obviously have a thick skin, <laughs> otherwise they'd be freezing, going out without a jacket, with a short sleeve shirt and shorts. And that's like my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law will go uh, out all day with a, just a pair of shorts on in the winter. And, uh, and I think that's uh, amazing testimony to uh, his hardiness. And he's got a lot of kapha. Thin skin, on the other hand, uh, you can't pinch an inch with this person's skin. You can only pinch a, a half centimeter, right? Uh, that if a person has thin skin, uh, you'll notice that it wrinkles a lot more easily here, and that could cause a lack of nourishment or deficiency. Although, look at this person's skin. Their skin looks pretty healthy. I mean, in terms of its coloring, yes, it's there's some wrinkling that could be age-related,
but I'm very impressed with this person's skin in terms of the coloring of the skin. Nice bright tones there. And, uh, and uh, thinner skin is dehydrated skin and you can usually see veins and arteries easily too. See here, you see this vein? Uh, and a remedy for thin skin is all is the foods that have your, all your good quality fats in them. Puffy skin, we talked about that before, related to water retention. Uh, and water retention can be due to poor circulation. We talked about that. Also to AMA buildup. If you have a buildup of AMA, then that's irritating, and then that causes inflammation, and then that causes water retention, right? Inflammation causes swelling. So inflammation due to toxins can cause puffy skin. So if you have um, toxins in the skin, then try taking trifla uh, to clear out some of those toxins. If you have really thick blood and thick skin, try uh, blood thinners like turmeric or even raw garlic or even raw garlic pickle. There's a recipe for that on Joyful Belly, which is great for February in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, which I believe corresponds to August in the Southern Hemisphere, is that that's the time of year when you're gonna want those pickled garlics and lots of beets this time of year, folks. Um, beets will uh, have a nice laxative action that's gonna clean out your body. This is the time of year when your body is ready to start doing spring cleaning. So that's gonna make your skin look healthy and beautiful. So have lots of beets, have some nice pickled garlic and, uh, and some turmeric. And also uh, think about some circulatory stimulants like ginger and cinnamon, just to get the blood moving uh, if it's uh, winter where you are. All right, let's, uh, let me just take a quick look and see some of the, uh, some of the questions here. Uh, CCFT, someone answered is cumin, coriander, and fennel seed tea. Um, Sherry asks, does the course go into detail with regard to thin skin with fat versus uh, thick skin, but not being a fat person, being cold in all weathers? Yeah, we, we, we go into a lot more detail uh, with all the different uh, patterns in the body. Are there options for the diet if you're allergic to garlic, black pepper, and turmeric? Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember that in Ayurveda, it's not about the specific ingredient but about the qualities of the ingredients. So Sherry, I'm glad you asked this question because what do we think of as garlic? I think of garlic as being uh, pungent and, uh, and like sharply pungent and aromatic. Well, you can, uh, you can recreate that. Actually, radishes are also sharp and, uh, and pungent, not quite as aromatic as garlic, uh, but you could um, mix it with just an aromatic spice, even like oregano or thyme, and you're going to uh, get some of the similar qualities to turmeric. Yeah, uh, black pepper is just a, you could substitute cayenne pepper for black pepper. Uh, it really, we're using black pepper for its pungency. So again, I'll say it again, folks, that in Ayurveda, we're not looking f usually for specific ingredients, but the qualities of those ingredients. Turmeric is a hot bitter. Black pepper is a, uh, is, a, is a pungent, and garlic is a pungent and aromatic, a hot pungent and aromatic. So, yeah, we can find lots of different ingredients that meet those criteria. All right, great. So, um, a normal complexion is no blemishes or breaks in the surface. A uh, creamy complexion. Healthy kapha people have creamy skin. There's uh, uh, it it um, is a smooth complexion. It looks plump and radiant uh, and unctuous, and it's a sign of the richness of the of the blood plasma, and it's a sign of ojas. Ojas is a key word uh, for. Uh, skin health, because ojas is the term in Ayurveda for when your tissues are well nourished and um, 
and that OGES is a, is, it gives you a lot of immunity and uh, resiliency. So uh, rich uh, plasma with lots of OGES is like the cream rising to the surface of a milk bottle. I remember when I was a kid, they had the, uh, mail, the milkman would deliver the milk bottles. Uh, and we used to love that. Uh, before they shut down the small dairy farms in the 80s, uh, they would, uh, the milkman would deliver the milk and we would love to get the cream off of the top of the milk bottle. Well, now there's cream topped milk again, and that's what we buy for my family is cream topped milk so that uh, my kids can get that, that cream. All right, a dull complexion. We talked about it a lot. Um, it can be li uh, poor liver uh, strength or poor kidney strength. You know, I'm not sure we talked about the kidneys earlier, so I'm just going to say it again, say, say it here, that the kidneys are the other major detox organ. And if your kidneys are weak, they're not going to be able to detox your blood and then you're gonna get that lusterless skin again. And so poor circulation, uh, liver weakness, kidney weakness, and buildup of toxins of any kind is gonna destroy the luster of the skin. And here you see this person is youthful and, um, and should have really healthy skin, but there's something that is, in, I can tell just from looking at it that, that this is not constitutional, but that there's something that's really aggravating or bothering or uh, this person um, because constitutionally, they're, uh, they're, they look strong, but look at the dilation of the pupils, uh, the puffiness underneath the eyes, uh, which is uncharacteristic of her age, and, uh, and then the, the unnatural um, extra brown uh, pigmentation to the skin, to me, seems like there's some, va some vata thing going on in her liver. And I'd like to uh, have more information just to really pin that down. Here we see the doshas are really flared up. This person has uh, a ruddy complexion. The skin looks rough. Uh, there's uh, irregularity in the coloring, which so to, any irregularity in coloring, I always think of doshas being very aggravated. And, um, and so I think of this as a liver issue. I remember I ate a fennel bulb on Thanksgiving and I must be allergic to fennel but my skin was ruddy for 12 hours and my face turned really ashen and also puffy. It was more like a pallor, not red like this person. Uh, but the next day my skin was back to normal. So in ruddy skin, support the liver. Uh, blackheads. Blackheads are a type of clogged hair follicle called a comedo. And uh, the dead skin cells in the pores react with uh, the oxygen and uh, turn the, uh, the pore black. This is uh, pore is stretched open. In the whiteheads, the pore is um, clogged and it's not open and then you get the pus buildup. So that's the difference between blackheads and whiteheads. Both of them imply ama and toxins <coughs> and uh, acne in general is a hot oily pitta condition in Ayurveda. Um, there has to be enough sweetness in the blood for acne, and there has to be enough toxins in the blood and enough pitta. So it's this cocktail of uh, sweet, uh, uh, hot, and toxins that makes acne. And of course, it could be environmental too. If you're in a really polluted environment, you may get more acne, etc. Freckles and moles are going to be uh, due to uh, liver weakness also and or UV uh, stimulation. I think of moles on the body like this as a vata uh, pushing pitta in the liver condition. But I don't have uh, a clinical study to back that up. This is just from my experience that vata pushing uh, pitta in the liver causes uh, moles. And freckles and moles are most common in pitta types. There's a classic liver spot. I got a small liver spot on my arm after catching a parasite in Morocco and it never went away. And it's still growing, but um, it went from about an eighth of an inch to about a quarter of an inch in over 15 years. And I remember this was before I studied Ayurveda. When I saw the liver spot, I freaked out because I thought I had gotten skin cancer in Morocco. And well, that's just, you know, travel paranoia, right? If you're traveling, you're, 
you know, you're kind of facing the unknown, right? And uh, for me, I got nervous about my health there. Warts are caused by um, HPV. HPV, most people are used to thinking of it as a sexually transmitted disease, uh, but there are many, many different kinds of HPV. Uh, and uh, the uh, w warts that you get over your body are not sexual, all sexually transmitted. They're actually just normal contact can create them. And usually they occur when you uh, get a cut and the virus enters into a, the cup. <coughs> and there's skin tags here. Another type of skin blemish. Um, I think of skin tags as poor fat metabolism. But again, it's one of those things where that's my clinical experience. I had a skin tag um, in an area uh, near my armpit. And when I uh, got rid of that tinea infection, um, which actually I had swollen, painful lymph nodes in that armpit, and when I got rid of the tinea infection, the skin tab went away. And But it's typical for skin tabs to happen in areas of friction. <clears throat> but that doesn't explain why, my, why mine went away when I cleared up the tinea infection. And again, I think of uh, skin tabs <coughs> excuse me, as a sign of poor fat metabolism. Spider nevi can be a sign of liver disease. Uh, but it can also occur in pregnancy due to high estrogen. All right, let's go through a skin summary by dosha and, uh, and wrap up our conversation. Uh, vata tends to have dry, delicate, thin skin. Now, this person here is pictured very youthful, so we're not seeing the dryness of the skin, but clearly in this photo, you can see the delicate thinness of the skin. Uh, it's, vata tends to tan in the sun. Uh, vata is prone to early aging or wrinkles. Out of balance, vata skin will look gray, dull, or lusterless. And it, their skin could be dry or chapped. And they tend to have colder skin. Pitta skin can be fair but and very sensitive, easily irritated, with lots of freckling. They may have multiple moles. The skin may appear red and flushed. Uh, they burn in the sun. And they tend to have oilier skin, and they tend to be warm to the touch. And if there's out of balance, there may be inflammation, rashes, hives, dermatitis, etc. Kapha tends to have thick, oily skin with a smooth, creamy complexion. The skin uh, tends to appear more pale and uh, cool and more clammy skin. Kapha people love to take showers because they always feel like their skin is wet and damp. Um, and out of bounds, they could be prone to puffier skin or fungal infections. So uh, this has been an introduction to uh, the art of skin assessment. Uh, we, I would love to uh, continue uh, with a uh, great lecture on skin remedies, going over all the different remedies. But this lecture has been about assessment. Uh, what's going on in your skin, uh, some basic ways to interpret it from an Ayurvedic point of view. It's part of our uh, Ayurveda Health Counselor program where you can uh, you know, start a practice as an Ayurveda Health Counselor and, uh, and get to learn Ayurveda for two years. It's a two-year program uh, and a really in-depth program. And as I mentioned, we're offering for people who've uh, come onto the call tonight, we're offering you $950 scholarship to the program if you sign up in the next five days. So take advantage of that if you like to learn this sort of thing. And we'll get to spend a whole two years doing this, uh, which uh, to me is very exciting. Uh, I, I love to teach. Hopefully you can feel that in, uh, in tonight's talk. I think uh, all of our teachers are, uh, are just really exciting uh, folks to listen to. So I wanna thank you all for uh, being here tonight. And I hope you enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the program. And let me see what, uh, what I have for questions here. Um, I'm happy to, uh, to take some, some questions. And yeah. And thank you, everyone. You're very welcome. I, I, I see all your uh, chats in the chat box. Um, and, uh, and I really appreciate your thank yous. And you're very, you're very welcome. And Sarah's talking about our February article about beets, beans, and greens. It, that's the mantra for February uh, in the in the northern hemisphere. Uh, beets, beans, and greens is what's going to uh, help you feel good. If you notice your appetite waning this time of year, 
uh, then uh, that's normal because as the heat comes, your body starts to metabolize fat in the skin and that reduces your caloric needs. So don't be alarmed if you lose your appetite this time of year. It means your body's starting to cleanse and uh, you can help your body with that cleanse with vinegar, um, garlic, beets, beans, and greens. So, um, oh, two people are asking how expensive is the two-year course? It's uh, 6,499 for two years, which is, um, which is a really competitive price uh, for the program, especially since you can get that $950 uh, scholarship too. So um, yeah, includes the clinical component also. Uh, not just, it's not just the theory component. Uh, you'll see that, um, that uh, sometimes those are uh, separately priced. It's for us, it's the whole thing. Uh, and um, yeah, and we'll study together for two years. Carrie asked, what's the difference between our two courses? We have a course that focuses on Ayurvedic digestion and nutrition. That's really for people who love to focus on digestion and nutrition as, as opposed to the whole of Ayurveda. So in the digestion course, um, we'll be going deep into uh, digestion much deeper. And, um, and into Ayurvedic nutrition, but the uh, Fundamentals of uh, Natural Healing course will have a much broader um, scope. And uh, the difference in what you can do is really just the scope of your knowledge uh, there. The uh, Mastering Ayurveda Digestion and Nutrition course is, uh, you're just, you're gonna be focusing your recommendations really in diet and digestion. You're not gonna be telling people how to help their asthma, for example. Uh, whereas in the Fundamentals of Natural Healing course, we'll be providing a model for you to um, balance your uh, client's constitutions in general uh, and also um, address uh, specific imbalances that, uh, that they, you know, specific Ayurvedic imbalances that they might have. The Digestion and Nutrition course is a year-long course. And both of them are, are very unique. Um, uh, we have students that take both because the Fundamentals of Natural Healing course discusses digestion, obviously, and nutrition. Um, but we probably cover in the first like three weeks um, uh, the, all the digestion and nutrition in the Fundamentals course. Um, and then we go much more in depth into digestion and nutrition in the, in, the, uh, in the specialization course. So, but the specialization course doesn't have the breadth. And, um, and the Ayurveda Health Counselor course, the Fundamentals of Natural Healing, that's the one that's the standard industry track program where you become a health counselor and then an Ayurveda practitioner. If you wanna uh, go that route, that's the broad training. The digestion course, uh, which is the one-year course, is the specific specialization uh, where you'll uh, uh, graduate with that with a digestive health coach certification, uh, Ayurvedic digestive health coach certification. So yeah, the 750 hour course, that's the two year, the mastering Ayurveda digestion and nutrition, that's the one year. That's a 600 hour program. Great. Well, I saw someone ask the question, um, how does ruddiness appear on brown or black skin? I think of ruddiness as a combination of, um, of a slight puffiness to the skin and a pallor to the skin. And so you can see it, it doesn't matter what your ethnicity, you can see when you compare to a, um, a person who has kind of glowing skin of that same ethnicity, you can see the pallor there and you can see the, um, the slight puffiness. <clears throat> Great. Anybody else have any other questions? Let's see here if I can. Um, I'll unmute the line. Let's see. It's right. If you want to. If you want to unmute your line to ask a question, 
then um, uh, then I'm, if you can't type it in, then I'm happy to uh, take it over over voice too. If you're having trouble getting the chat box up, so yeah, and I'll just hang out on the line just for a few minutes more. If you have any questions, Karen asks if we can download the slides. I don't have the slides available for download. Um, it's a great, it's a good question, and uh, I know that. Um, you know, it would be, it's great to, ha to, to have the slides um, there. You know, there, you can pause. I'm going to send out this recording tomorrow, and you could pause if you wanted to get any information from one of the slides on that recording. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I have a question regarding, um, can you start these at any time or do they always start in October? Okay, the digestion course uh, starts in October. The fundamentals course uh, is, uh, you, can, um, you can join at any time. Okay, and this fundamentals is the 750? That's the 750 two-year course, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, well, if nobody has any other questions, uh, then I'll bid you all a, a wonderful evening. And uh, it's been great. Uh, I, I, I love it when people are excited to learn about uh, their bodies and to uh, learn about Ayurveda to help their communities. Uh, it's, it's just, it's so great, it's so refreshing and, uh, and enjoyable to get this time together. So uh, thank you all uh, for for your interest in Ayurveda for, um, and for attending tonight's talk. Have a wonderful evening.